three minutes and a certain number of seconds. Somebody time this. Try and be extremely brief. What is speculative realism? It's a new movement emerging in philosophy. Uh, the, it basically emerged in 2007 at a, an event in Goldsmiths College in London. So super fresh. This is extremely current philosophy. And it uh, began with four people, just mention them briefly. Um, Kantan Mayasu, who wrote Opera de Finitude and uh, After Finitude, and uh, coined the term correlationism. And so all speculative realism is about is what Mayasu calls correlationism. It's basically people challenging or questioning or reworking correlationism. Say, so what is correlationism? It basically goes back to Kant, the Copernican revolution in consciousness that Kant initiated, and the whole point is correlationism is that we can only talk about being insofar as it relates to thought. So that thought relates to being, being relates to thought, and that's all we can talk about. So that means that uh, we can't talk about being aside from thought. We can't talk about things in themselves without first talking about human consciousness or something like that. And uh, Mayasu doesn't have a problem with the correlate, he has a problem with the finitude of the correlate. Um, so that it, he sort of infinitizes it and uh, so that we can talk about things in themselves still through uh, our consciousness. Um, but in a way that sort of absolutizes it so we can know them. Still through consciousness, but we can know them. The other people in speculative realism don't like the correlate at all. They say, I can talk about things without going through the human. So there's three of those, really briefly. Um, the one you've already heard a lot about is Graham Harmon, who uses a lot of Bruno Latour, a lot of Heidegger, and his philosophy is object-oriented philosophy. We can talk about things in themselves, and they're objects. They're both in infinite relations with other things and infinitely withdrawn, totally inaccessible. Um, then we have Ray Brassier, who's basically a nihilist, but the coolest nihilist ever, transcendental nihilism. I try and plug that because I know nihilism generally doesn't have a good reputation. Um, and uh, then Ian Hamilton Grant, who is basically using Schelling, um, kind of Deleuze, it's kind of like a process philosophy thing. But the whole point with Grant is we can get rid of the correlate by focusing on our sort of transcendental ground in the earth. And so we're going to hear more about that from uh, Matt. So the basic point here is that we can do realism because we can talk about things in themselves. And we're speculative because we're bringing back metaphysics after a few centuries of people being totally anti-metaphysics. Either because they're do being very scientistic and they don't want metaphysics, or because they just want to focus on language games instead of metaphysics, or because they just want to do critical theory and analyze structures of domination instead of doing metaphysics. So this isn't your daddy's realism. <laughs> Realism in that sense is just kind of like a health inspector comes in and says, hey, don't be careful, idealist speculators. There's a real world out there, maybe. Um, what this is, if that, that kind of realism is basically like Saturn coming in to limit you and make sure you don't say crazy stuff, that's not our realism. Our realism is speculative realism. If realism is normally Saturn, speculative realism is Jupiter. And so it's a much more expansive and much more weird and strange kind of philosophy than anything we've seen before. How long is that?